Hello friends, welcome to this advanced data engineering on Microsoft Azure. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through how to integrate multiple categories of files resident in Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to Azure SQL database via Azure Data Factory Data Pipeline activities focusing primarily on filter activity. Kindly ensure you subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so and let's get started. Let's take a look at the source data resident in my Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So this is the portal.azure.com. I'm going to click on this ADLS Gen 2 Cornerstone Storage Account type. And in the storage account, underneath the data storage, I'm going to click on containers and click on multiple sales container. Now in this container, I've got a bunch of CSV files such as customer for Canada, China, Japan, Spain, UK, United States. Basically, I've got six CSV files for customer by country. And then we have the product for electronics, furniture, home appliance, outdoor, personal care, sports. Again, six CSV files for product by category. And finally, we have the sales for the East, South, North, West region. So we have the sales by region. So we want to go ahead and create three tables in Azure SQL database that we're going to use to ingest all the appended files for the customer product and sales files via the Azure Data Factory activities. So I'm going to come to this tab and this is my Cornerstone IT Solution Database SQL database. I'm going to use the entry ID to log in into the editor and then I'm going to come to this script and copy this create table SQL script. I'm going to control V and scroll up. So I'm going to have the customer table containing four columns, customer ID, the customer name, email, and country. And then we're going to have the product table that contains four columns, the product ID, the product name, category, and price. And then we're going to have the sales table that contains three columns, the sales ID, region, and quantity. So we can go on and run these three tables. And then we can just preview the sales table and see the structure of that table. So let's go ahead and select and run. I'm going to come to the result and then we have the names of the columns. We have the sales ID, the region and quantity. That's brilliant. So you want to go ahead and launch our Azure Data Factory Studio. So I'm going to come to this tab in the middle and then I can see the Connection ID Solutions ADF1 Data Storage version 2. So click on Launch Studio. Okay, so this is my Data Factory Cornerstone IT Solutions ADF1. So I'm going to click on this to expand this tab. On the left hand pane, we have the home, the author, monitor, manage, and learning center. So to get this started, we're going to create linked services to the source and the destination. So to do that, I'm going to come to the manage tab and underneath the Connections, we have the linked service, and then we're going to create new linked service to the source. Now, our source is Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Click on continue, and then I'm going to call this one Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 linked service. And this is going to be running on the auto resolve integration runtime as they connect via the integration runtime. And I'm going to stick with this default account key authentication type. And then I'm going to provide my Azure Virtual Studio Enterprise subscription. I'm going to point to the storage account name, which is the ADLS Gen 2 cornerstone, and then click on test connection to the ADLS Gen 2. So this gave us a successful connection. Click on create. So we have the linked service to the source created. So we want to create another linked service to the destination, which is the Azure SQL database. So continue. I'm going to call this one Azure SQL database link service. And then it's going to be running on the same auto resolve integration runtime. And I'm going to choose my subscription. And I'm going to provide the name of my server, which is the Cornerstone IT Solutions. And the database name is going to be Cornerstone IT Solutions Database. And this is going to be running on the SQL authentication as the authentication type. So this is going to be my username that I set up in the creation of the Azure SQL Database. And then we have the password. So I can test connection to the Azure SQL Database. Again, this is a successful connection. So click on Create. Okay, so we have the linked services created for the source and the destination. So we want to go ahead and 
create our data pipeline and then get things started further. So I'm going to come to the author in the author tab under the factory resources. We have the pipelines, change data capture, data set, data flows, power query. So I'm going to come to the pipelines and click on this ellipses and then click on the new pipeline. And I'm going to give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one data integration. And once I'm done, I can close these properties and I can see it has been renamed as data integration. I can see data integration renamed. Okay, so I'm going to come to these activities and I'm going to use the get metadata activity. Now, we will actually get all the files resident in this specific container, the multiple sales container. So I'm going to come back here and let me just collapse this in order to manage the screen. And then we have the get metadata activity within the designer of the data pipeline. So I'm going to come to the general settings and I'm going to provide the name and then go to the settings. So for the name, I'm going to call this one get metadata of files. And I'm going to go to the settings tab. In the settings tab, I can provide a data set. So we're going to create a different data set for this get metadata. So click on the name and I'm going to search for Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 continue and I'm going to choose the delimited text as the format because our data contain CSV files. So delimited text is fine and then I'm going to give this a meaningful name. I'm going to call this one get meta data delimited text as the name i'm going to use the link service we created and i'm going to browse through the file path so click on the browse and then i'm going to browse through the multiple sales container and i'm going to see the bunch of sales files in this case i'm not going to pick any because we want to dynamically access that particular container so click ok and then this is going to be first row as error checked automatically and then we have this import schema from connection store type doesn't matter click ok Next, I'm going to come to the field list. So we want to create the child items argument of this get metadata connecting to our container. So click on this name for the field list. And then we want to choose the child item. So basically, I want to get all the files within the container. So go ahead and validate. So check for errors, click OK, and then click on debug. And let's see the result in the output at the bottom. So I'm going to just wait. All things being equal, this should give us a successful activity status. So succeeded. Brilliant. I'm going to click on this output and then I'm going to maximize this. And I can see the child item such as the name of the first file, which is the customer underscore Canada CSV file. And the type is file. And then we have the customer, China, Japan, and so on. And when I scroll down, I can see the product electronics, appliances, and then we have the furnitures. And then when I scroll further down, I can see the sales by regions such as the South, North, East, and the West. So this is basically how we can use the get metadata to get all the chat items in our container. So we want to go ahead and use the filter activity, which is the core part of this presentation, because we want to learn how we can use the filter activity within a real business context. So I'm going to move this down a little bit to the left and I'm going to come here and search for the filter activity. So basically we want to use the filter activity to filter the child items coming from the get metadata activity. So we can actually see all the files for the sales in one side, the files for the product and then the files for the customer. So I need three filter activities. So and I'm going to move this down a little bit and let me just position them separately. So I'm going to drag this on success to this and then I'm going to drag this again to this and then connect this to the last one at the bottom. Okay, that's sorted. So now we can go ahead and configure the filter activity. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to move this up a little bit and make sure this is selected. This is selected and I'm going to come to the general tab. I'm going to call this on filter of, let's start with the sales files, the sales file that contains sales. So I'm going to go to the settings tab. In the settings, we're going to parameterize the item. So click on this and then add dynamic content. And then I'm going to come into this expression builder. And then I want to get the metadata of the files. This get metadata of files activity. So we have the output and then we want to get the child items that equal to whatever condition we specify in this condition. So for now, we have this output dot child items. Click OK. And then I'm going to come to the conditions. We want to parameterize this also. Click on add dynamic content. I'm going to come here and I'm going to use add contains. So we want to filter all the 
item the file that contains in this case um, sales so i'm going to come here and provide the filter of the sales files we have the item and i want to get the names of the items we are we're going to use dot name and then inside the single quote i'm going to provide the sales that contains sales okay so basically we are filtering all the files that contain sales here so this is sorted click okay and i'm going to move this down and let's go to the product so i'm going to use this for the product so make sure this is selected this filter activity and i'm going to call this some filter of product files and i'm going to go to the settings tab in the settings again for the item click on add dynamic content and i'm going to get the metadata and dot child items and then click ok so for the condition i'm going to add dynamic content again i'm going to use the add contains and then press the tab key okay let me do that again add contains okay and then i'm going to come before this comma fit of the product files the item dot name and then for the condition itself inside the single quote now we are dealing with the product i believe so i'm going to type in product and then click ok so this has been sorted for the product let's go to the customer so i'm going to click on this fit activity to activate it and then go to the general tab i'm going to call this some filter of customer files and then go to the settings in the settings for the items our dynamic content get metadata and then we have the dot output dot child items and then click ok for the condition add dynamic content i'm going to come here and then add contains okay let me do that again add contains press the tab key and for the first argument i'm going to grab the filter of the customer name dot name and then i'm going to provide the condition inside the single quote customer okay this is the condition click ok and let's go ahead and validate and check for any errors. So no errors or good. Click on debug. So we want to go ahead and see the filtered list of the files for the product, customer, and the sales. So all things being equal, this should give us a successful activity status. The pipeline status succeeded, and then we have the fit of the product, the customer, and the file. Let's check the output of the product file so the filter of the product file click on this output and i'm going to maximize this and there we go so we can say we have the product for the home appliance we have the electronics furniture down to spot and then this is stored inside this key value pair this json um, format so this is stored inside this value so we're going to use this later on so we have basically six files six as uh, files i'm going to close this and let's go to the next one the customer file output and then i can see we've got six customer Canada, China, down to United States, and then again put the and then go to the sales, and then in the sales we're gonna have four: the east, north, south, and the west regions, and then this is stored also inside the value. So the filter activity is working fine. So we're able to filter the files for the product customer and the sales. Now we're gonna go ahead and create the for each activity to iterate over the sales customer and the product files coming from the filter activity to be accessible for the copy data activity within the for each of each of the components, sales customer and the product. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit and let me just move this to the left and I'm gonna to come to the activity and set for the for each activity. Again, we need three of them. So I'm going to drag three across to the designer and I'm going to connect this um, sales files to this and I'm going to connect the products to this and I'm going to connect the customer filter to this. Let's start with the customer, okay? Now I'm going to select this connecting to the customer. I'm going to move up and I'm going to call this one for each of customer files. And then I'm going to go to the settings tab in the settings. I'm going to click on the item and add the content. Now we want to filter or iterate over all the tables in the customer filter activity. So to do that, I'm going to click on this filter of customer file and then we have the output dot value. Now the value is the value in the JSON that stores all the files that contain customer in this filter activity. So this is the value. I'm going to click OK. Now in order to confuse you, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to click outside and then we have the customer. I'm going to come to the filter of customer, click on the output. This is the value I'm talking about here. Okay. So that's exactly what I specified as the output for this um, item. So we have the dot value and then click OK. So that's been sorted. Let's go to the uh, the product. I'm going to click on this for each activity 
covering the product filter activity so make sure this is selected and i'm going to scroll up and then i'm going to call this one for each of product files and then go to the settings in the settings item at the content i'm going to grab the fit of the product file and then i'm going to put in dot value and then click ok and this is sorted i'm going to go to the last one at the bottom which is going to be the sale so click on this for each activity move it up a little bit i'm going to call this one for each of sales files go to the settings and then add the content and i'm going to come here grab this dot value okay so click ok and this has been sorted now we want to go ahead and just copy the activity within each of the four each to move all the files for that contain uh, customer products and sales respectively so i'm going to click on this pencil in the four each and edit that so i'm going to come to the activity and use the copy data activity drag it to the canvas of the four activity for this customer file so i'm going to move this up a little bit i'm going to call this one copy data of customer files and then i'm going to go to the settings tab in the settings i'm going to create a different data set for this copy data activity that contains the customer files so click on the new and then i want to create the data sets to the azure data lake storage and tool and I'm going to choose the delimited text as the format and I'm going to differentiate all the data set. I'm going to call this one customer delimited text and I'm going to use the same link to service we created earlier. I'm going to browse through the file path and click on the multiple sales container and I'm going to access all the files. Now in this case, I'm not going to pick anything again because I want to dynamically access all the customers files and then the product and so on and so forth. So click OK. And then we're going to have the first row as either checked automatically, which is fine. And this is fine also. Click OK. OK, so we have that sorted. Now, we want to go ahead and parameterize the file name of this file path. So to do that, I'm going to click on the parameters and then I'm going to create a new parameter. I'm going to call this one customer file names and then i'm going to return back to the connection and then i'm going to click on the file name and then click on add dynamic content and then i'm going to come here and grab the customer file name parameter we just created so we have data set dot customer file name parameter and then click ok now at this junction we're going to preview the data and see whether this is working off or not i'm going to type in customer underscore um, uk dot csv and then click on preview to see the content yeah now this returns some data this simply means our setup is working fine so we have the customer id the customer name email and the country and close this tab for now so i'm going to return back now we can see we have the customer delimited text data set tab so i'm going to return back to the data integration pipeline itself come back to this and then i'm going to say the customer file name so we're going to provide the for each of the customer file name so click on this and then add the content grab this for each of the customer file and we have the item dot names of the files coming from the for each activity and then click ok okay this has been sorted and then we'll move to the sync the destination again we're going to create sync data set so new Azure SQL database continue and I'm going to call this one a customer Azure SQL table and use the same link service we created earlier again I'm going to choose the table we created also so this is going to be custom dbo dot customer and click OK okay so this has been configured for the for each activity copy data activity so i'm going to step out and then i'm going to move to the next one so move it up a little bit and let's go to the cell so click on this pencil in this for each activity to edit and i'm going to drag the same copy data activity again a new one for the sales i'm going to call this one copy data of sales files and go to the source and then click on the new data set and i'm going to search for the azure data link storage and tool continue delimited text as the format i'm going to call this one sales delimited text and use the same link service we created browse through the file path click on the multiple sales and then click ok at the bottom and click ok and we're going to create the parameter to access all the file that contains sales in the container so i'm going to come to the 
So that is it, open it up, and then I'm going to come to the parameters. I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to call this one sales file names. And once I'm done, go back to the connection, and then I can specify the parameter of the file name. So click on add dynamic content, grab the sales file names parameters, click OK. Again, I'm going to close this tab, click on the preview, and I'm going to provide a value. I'm going to type in sales. Let's see the is underscore is dot csv and all things being equal this should give us some data sets telling us our setup is working fine so cool we have the sales id region and the quantity so i can close this for now and let's and of course we can even see the sales delimited text tab data set at the top so come back to the data integration and uh, we'll go to the sync destination create a new data set azure sql database and click on continue i'm going to call this one sales azure sql table and use the same link service and again i'm going to provide the name of the table which is going to be sales table click ok and this complete the configuration for the copy activity of the sales for each so i'm going to step out I'll click on this to go out of that and i'm going to move this designer up a little bit so let's go to the last one so which is going to be product so again i'm going to open this for it for the product can you see click on that and again grab the copy data activity across i'm going to call this some copy of of um, product files and then go to the source and i'm going to create a new data set azure Data link, storage and two, continue, delimited text as the format, and I'm going to call this one products, delimited text to differentiate the names, and then use the same link to service, browse through the file path, click on the multiple cells, click OK at the bottom, and then click OK, and then we can parameterize the file names coming from the container. So to do that, I'm going to click on open and then click on the parameters. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this one uh, product file names so i can go to the connection and then come to the file name and then parameterize that by calling the product file name parameters and then click ok and then i can close this tab for now preview data provided one of the data i'm going to call this on product underscore outdoor.csv and then click on ok brilliant we have the product id product name category that equal to outdoor and then the price so our setup is looking good so i'm going to close this tab for now and then i'm going to return back to the data integration and i'm going to come to the product file name click on this add dynamic content grab this and then i want to provide the name so item name click ok and this is the setup for the source i want to go to the same destination new data set azure sql database click on continue and i'm going to call this one a product Azure SQL table and use the linked service and I'm going to provide a dbo.product table and I can close this for now by clicking OK. Okay, so we have the sync also specified. So this is the setup and I'm going to step out of that um, for each and again, I can quickly check it out in order not to waste a lot of resources to be sure everything is configured properly let me quickly come back to this customer and check it out so I'm going to click on this and let me check the settings of the um, source so this is working fine we have the customer finding parameter and then we have the for each item name and let me see the sync okay the sync is yeah well configured and i can go back by stepping out and let me also check um, the second table, the sales. So click on the pencil to check it out. Click on the copy data activity. Move it up a little bit, come to the source, and oops, you can see I forgot to provide this sales file name. So it's really important to check it out for any potential error. So item and then name. So click OK. So this otherwise it will work, so it must be specified. So for the sync, and then we have the sales. Okay, so we have the sales, so it corresponds looking good uh, let me just check for the sake of argument the last one so click on the pencil and I'm going to cop check the copy data activity and come to the sync okay this is properly specified item dot name so let me check the sync and grab the product okay our setup is fully complete because I don't want to see any error so I can click on validate to check 
for any error and all this is looking good so we can click on debug and so we have the pipeline status succeeded so everything looks good so i'm going to move this up and then we can see under the output we have all this bunch of steps so we have the succeeded succeeded and i'm going to scan through for any error so everything is looking good so it's turning green so this simply means our setup is absolutely correct so i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to check this up in the designer and i can reduce this a little bit and then this is the amazing flow you can see we have these green check marks across the activities so this simply means everything succeeded now we want to go ahead and check this out in azure sql database so i want to check the sales table first i want to check the sales table i can see we have the east and when i scroll down we're going to see we have the west and then we have the north and then when i scroll down we have the south now let's check the product table so product and select and again we're going to see all the products for the personal care we have the electronics and then we have the outdoor when you scroll down we have the home appliances the spot and everything looks good and when you load more we should see more record at the bottom so everything is looking good and let's check the customer by country so let's run this and then we can say we have the japan customer four customers and then we have the united states we've got the uk and then we have the china canada and all so this absolutely shows that our setup worked pretty fine so this is how we can use the azure data factory with bunch of activities particularly the filter activity to orchestrate data movement from the azure data lake storage tool that contains several files into the azure sql database as a single tables for the sales customer and product i trust you enjoyed this video if you do like share comment and follow me for more data engineering videos thank you for watching bye for now